Hey guys, what is going on? Um, back again. So, we're just gonna do a bit of a short video today. Um, I haven't had a lot of content coming out, but that's just because I haven't had a lot of stuff to film on the car at the moment, it's sort of in between a time where I'm saving for something that's gonna cost a little bit of money um, to do the car, but that's getting done in the next three weeks. Um, and then like all the crew stuff that we do, it hasn't been getting a lot of views. So I just sort of taken that as you guys don't like to see that sort of stuff as much, but I'm still gonna keep posting it because, you know, I wanna show people about that life and about our big family that we have here um, at the Blacklist. So I'm gonna keep doing those, but they do take a little bit longer to edit because there's a lot more, you know, talking, background noise. Um, bits and pieces in it. I've got to siphon through a lot of footage, you know, when we do cruises and stuff like that. I will have one of our crews that we did a few weeks back coming out shortly. Uh, I'm gonna try and sort of get at least two videos up a week. Um, I was doing every second day when I first started and that was because I had a lot of content. At the moment, I just don't have heaps of content. So we'll see how we go. Um, I'm gonna try my best to get more content out there because people have been asking. But today I was just gonna do a bit of a short video. Well, it, I think it's gonna be short, I don't know. It's probably gonna turn into something pretty long um, of the overall build of this car and a few things that we get asked about a lot. So the splitters and the wrap, people ask me all the time. So no matter where I post it, they ask me, oh, what's body kits that? Well, it's not actually a body kit, it's just um, splitters. So around the edge of the, the standard bumpers. But we'll go into it all, a little bit of detail. We'll go into the motor build and everything there. So try not to make it long. In my mind, I feel like it's gonna be a short video, but it's probably gonna turn into like, you know, 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, guys. All right, so we'll start off with the motor. Just had this random shower. It was just hot as and now it's raining. All right, so this motor, when we first bought it, the, um, it was, I was told that it was a BA body with a BF motor, which isn't the case. When I finally checked the engine numbers, because they're actually quite hard to get to, like down there, like right down the bottom, you sort of got to put some like baby powder or chalk on it or something like that. But then I had to get my phone in there and zoom right in and take a photo to be able to identify it properly. When I finally did that, it turns out that the guy just, you know, lied and said, this is what it is and it has all this stuff when it had none of what he said it had in it. And it also had a completely different motor in it, just a standard motor, not the BF motor. Um, so that, and then that started my track to like a never ending money pit, but we've finished it now. So that's the main thing. But we pulled the motor out once we found that out, because I wanted to make like, you know, I want to make like 600 horsepower or more. So the BA motor just wasn't gonna cut it. So we pulled the motor out, started the rebuild. The rebuild consisted of a uh, motor out, uh, block and head sent away. We went with a Atomic 6, I think it's a 698 rebuild kit. So forged pistons and rods, oversized. Um, so the block had to be bored out to fit the new pistons, which is a good thing when you're doing a rebuild anyway. Um, it's just so you've got a fresh bores, everything's fresh, you know, there's no imperfections in anything. Um, so we got that done. Then we did valve springs, head studs, um, oversized washers um, on the head studs. All, they were all supplied by um, Dominator Motorsport. Um, what else do we do there? We pretty much replaced every everything in there. So valves, uh, valve stem seals and all that other stuff while we were at it. Uh, then we did like water pump and all those maintenance maintenance type of bits. Uh, water pump, alternator, um, new belts, new tensioners, new pulleys, everything like that's on there is new. Um, and then we get into the fun stuff. So we got the um, intake plenum, uh, plasma man, just top half plenum, not the full thing. Um, with a stage, I think it's a stage three in a cooler from Plasma Man. Get down there. 
um, and then four inch intake, plasma man, airbox, plasma man intake. Everything's pretty much gone plasma man on this build. Um, plasma man uh, dual entry fuel rail with 1250cc injectors. Then we've got the um, FXD go fast bits fuel reg. Um, and like I said, dual entry fuel rail. So coming in from both ends, one there, one there, and then the return in the middle. Uh, that race works. Um, 1250cc injectors as well. What else do we do here? Uh, we got the Pulsar GDX 3584, but it's still running the standard um, internal gate there. So that's where we're having the issues right now. Maxing out at 19 PSI, so it makes 420 kilowatts at the wheels, which just should be good for a lot more. So the thing that I've been saving for at the moment is I've just bought uh, 45 millimeter hypergate, turbo smart hypergate, um, and a new um, dual stage um, boost solenoid to go on here. Um, and then we're putting the external wastegate on there with a the screamer pipe. So, should we have more boost control then? We should be able to just pump it up and um, should be good, hopefully. Uh, going back into it, three inch. Sorry, four inch dump pipe into a three and a three and a half inch exhaust system right through single muffler. <clears throat> um, the rest of the fuel system, I've got a plasma man uh, surge tank down there with twin 044 fuel pumps. Um, and then I've got a 460 in tank pump as well um, with a bit of modifications there to give it a bit more flow through so we can get the right fuel pressure up top here. Um, that's probably about it for this motor. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot of money in there. There's, you know, I don't, I don't even want to think about it, but there is definitely a lot of a lot of money in that motor and we built it, you know, right from the start. So I don't have to go back into that motor unless I want to go forge the um, crank and the, and the cradles and, and anything else in there. I could probably still do, but it's still good for, you know, 800 horsepower or so now, reliably. Um, so yeah, that's the motor, guys. There's probably a few things I forgot there, but that's okay. The majority of it was right. All right. So moving on to the wrap. So we did this wrap ourselves. Mainly my partner, she stayed home while I was at work and wrapped most of the car. Her and Elijah, um, he owns, obviously owns Low VE. Um, he wrapped this with her while I was at work. I got in and did a bit where I could, um, but I did have to work the whole time they were doing this. So that's really awesome of them. So the wrap is a satin chrome emerald green it's called by tech wrap it's not really the best wrap to use i mean the colors that they do are awesome but the quality of the wrap is not bad it just doesn't like to stick and in australian sun and like in the recess and stuff like that, it just wants to come back out come back out and we before all the wrap critics are on here we cleaned everything we post heated the hell out of this wrap to to try and get it to actually stick in the joints and the majority of the places it has it's just a few piece uh, bits and pieces here and there that have popped so like the door handles here like you can see here it's popped but we can fix that where we'll just cut the seam in there and put an inlay in there and put some edge seal on it and it'll be sweet the roof is black because we did run out of wrap um, I bought a full roll and it still wasn't enough for this car. So that's why the roof is black. I do get a little bit of shit for it because it looks sort of tacky, but I mean, I'm happy with it. It matches in with the new Blacklist banner, um, our new shadow cuts that we got done a few, oh, about a month or so ago. We got these new shadow cuts done. So, loving those new banners. 
So yeah, that's the wrap. It's a, it's a chrome based wrap, so it's even harder to use again. It doesn't like to stretch. Um, because if you overstretch it, you'll get like, you'll be able to see the color change. It'll go almost silver, like the base. It's on it. it doesn't have a black base backing to it. It has like a, a silver backing to it. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the wrap guys. It was a hard job to do. The, the boys from Rapwise actually helped me with the front bar and the rear bar because they're so intricate on an XR6. Like even the boys there were saying that, you know, they overcomplicated their bars um, compared to a lot of other cars out there. So they did help me with the front bar and the rear bar um, just because I was, they're good mates of mine. And, you know, they said they didn't like to use the tech wrap because, you know, it does pop here and there. But um, yeah, I was happy with that. So yeah all right let's move on to the splitters all right guys so the splitters on this car so these are a custom set of splitters you can buy a similar kit um, from ice scrape splitters um, i think he is down in melbourne i believe um, they're all cnc cut and um, cad design so they're really really nice quality um, this is a custom kit um, so my front lip here is extended to what normally comes on a kit and these side fins are taller i went with that because i wanted like a far more sort of aggressive look something that sort of really popped and stood out and i think i achieved that with these <clears throat> um so the front bar like i said has the extended lip i think elijah on his car he got even bigger extension on his again his is insane but you know it's just something different something cool that's what we're trying to achieve in the car scene is to be different not to sort of blend in with everyone else so this is the so the kits come with full mounting hardware and everything else And then you got your side skirts here. These are extended out again to what you get in the normal kit. And then they dip back in for where you stand out of the car or else you end up standing on them all the time. And then the side fins. So a lot of people aren't sure about the side fins, but I like them. It's something a bit different. And then I also got the rear, rear fins as well, which a lot of people don't get. So they're the rear spats. And then following underneath, I just painted that black underneath there to sort of follow around. I did want to get a rear, real aggressive sort of rear splitter under there as well. But they haven't made a car, like they haven't done a B-series for one of those yet from Ice Scrape, so. So that's the splitter kit, guys. You can find Ice Scrape splitters on Facebook and Instagram. Hit him up. Tell him Joel from Blacklist sent you. He might be able to hook you up with something. It's not an official sort of thing, but you know, I have sent him a heap of work, so he might be able to help you out um, with the price. Um, I'm not too sure, just never hurts to ask. So yeah, that's the splitters, guys. All right, we'll move on to the wheels. All right, so wheels and suspension on this, I get asked a little bit about too, like wheel specs and what, what suspension I'm running and stuff like that. So um, I am running work T7Rs and the specs are 18 by 10 and a half plus 12 all round. So that's, that's where we're at all round, uh, front and rear. Um, would I recommend to get this size? Not on the front. Um, they fit on this car, but I don't have it. I'll give you a look. I don't have it super low at the front. So the front there is not, um, definitely not low, really. Like I could have it lower and better fitment if I went a different size wheel on the front. If I went a nine and a half with like a plus 10 or something like that, I reckon you'd have a far better fitment. You could take a little bit of camber out and have a bit more sort of tire wall on fender. But 
you know, I like it. The camber is cool. It does look good. It's just not practical when you get everyone bagging you out because you've got a high powered car with a shitload of camber. Um, and then yeah, rears fit pretty good. I would have liked a bit more fitment on them though, a bit more guard to tire clearance. I mean, I could probably dial that in, but then I start having clearance issues with the 10 and a half, so with a plus 12 offset. A lot of people don't really understand the offset side of things, but it makes a massive difference to if your wheels are actually gonna fit properly. When I say fit properly, I mean fit close as possible to the guards, um, cause that's the way I like to run them. But yeah, it's comfortable, it works. I do get a bit of scrubbing in the front and the rear, only on heavy load in the rear and the front when I'm going up driveways, as you can see the sort of taking out the wrap on that guard there anyway. So suspension wise on this, I'm running in the front, I'm running the uh, Royal Camber Mounts from Royal Auto Styling. And then in the rear, I'm running uh, I think they're PSR camber arms, adjustable camber arms. So I have got camber front and rear a fair bit. Um, and then also XYZ coilovers all around. So the boys at Royal Auto Styling hooked me up with all the, all the suspension for this car. So they did the XYZ coilovers, they did the PSR camber arms, and obviously the Royal Auto Styling camber front mounts. So they did all that work for me. Yeah, go see the boys at Royal Auto Styling. They sort of, they, they work with this type of car every day. You know, they know how to make things fit. They know what sizes are gonna work well. They know, you know, everything like that. There's no, bullshit like when you go to tie zone or or bob jane or anything like that where they're like oh no you can't put those wheels on they they sit too far out of the guard or they sit too close to the guard these boys are trying to achieve the perfect fitment for you so that's why they're awesome so raw auto styling they deal with a lot of air suspension as well um head down there talk to tristan charles they can um help you out and sort you out all right, let's have a little bit of a look inside. There's not too much in here. Um, there's a couple of little custom pieces here and there. And um, yeah, so as you can see, starting here, we've got the 5% window tin all around. Um, and then also, if you can see that, we've got our embossed Louis Vuitton window pillars. So again, my partner did that for me. Really awesome job. All right, let's um, jump inside the car. So in here, it's pretty standard. This is the premium, the premium pack. So it's premium sound, leather, and like suede. On the seats, it's all pretty old and rugged, but you know, it does what it needs to do. Um, then I've got the likewise shifter with the, um, Rod Stewart extension on it. I get a lot of questions about this too. So that is it. I, I love it. I don't care. It's an auto. I know that, but um, you know, I just like it. So the way I made this fit, which probably isn't the best way, but it's super easy. If I get pulled over, I just pull the, pull my old shifter out. If I get pulled over. And this one just pops off and just slide that one back on. There's just a bit of tape there that makes it fat to stop it from, you know, actually coming off. And it's not like I've got to bang gears because it's not a manual. So, yeah, I, that's what I do. Get pulled over, pull that off because that is illegal, obviously. Put the standard one back on there and they'll never know the difference. They probably do now because if they're watching these YouTube videos, which sometimes cops do, they know what's up. <laughs> So yeah, that's my my drip gear knob and Rod Stewart shifter. Uh, I've just got a little Bluetooth device here that connects to the radio uh, and then I can play all my uh, Spotify and stuff from this little device here. 
I do have the double din where I can put the CD player in here all ready to go, but I'm probably not going to do that for a long time yet. Um, there's the banner from the inside. That's pretty good. And then we've got the Powertune digital dash here. So I actually love this dash. It just gives the interior another sort of aspect of a bit more custom look. Um, yeah, they they helped me out with this. So they sponsored me for this dash, which is awesome. Um, super appreciative of that. And then we've just got a bit more of the, you probably can't see it. Got a little bit more of the Louis Vuitton embossing on the trims in here. We're eventually gonna do all of this too in the embossed Louis Vuitton look. So that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, that's about it for the interior. It's pretty clean for, you know, the car that it was. This was just used as a skid car. So. All right, guys, well, that about does it for the sort of build breakdown on this car at the moment. Um, like I said, in the next three weeks, it will have the external wastegate on it, more power than what it's currently making. And then I don't know what else to do from there. Like I've sort of, I think I might put, I might start on the interior, black, do a black hood lining and do the starlight sort of ceiling. I know everyone's sort of doing it now, but just another form of mod that I can do. I sort of want to go all out with this build you know, as I've done with everything else on it. I just want to keep going and doing everything I possibly can. And then I might get stuck into the engine bay and, um, and dress all that up a bit more too. Add braided lines here and there um, where I can or braided hose, whatever the hell people want to call it. I got in trouble for calling it braided line, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is, braided line. So yeah, I'll get in there, do that clean all that up, make it a bit more showy than what it is now. Um, and just keep going for power. I eventually want to get rid of the gearbox. Oh yeah, I didn't speak about that. The gearbox is a built four speed BTR. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to last, but we'll see what happens. I might do some like custom headlights or something too. We do have the custom grill there already. But yeah, anyway. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little update. Um, I'll be sure to get some more content to you guys soon because I know everyone's been asking. Make sure you head over to all our socials. We do have TikTok. We do have Instagram, Facebook. Um, jump on all those. Like, comment, subscribe on, on whatever you can. Follow, whatever. But yeah. Like these videos, subscribe to these videos, and comment would be great. I answer everyone's comments. So if you want to know something, just ask on there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Bye.